This is part two of the lecture notes for um, chapter two. And um, in this slide, we are just simply, the, the one thing I want to point out to you is that electrons do not reside in the nucleus of the atom. They reside in electron shells. And make sure that you know the last line on this slide says the chemical properties of an element are determined by the number of electrons in the outer electron shell. We call this the valence shell. And the electrons in the valence shell, we call those valence electrons. So the number of electrons that are in the outer shell, this is supposed to be an asterisk, um, are the ones that determine, for example, <clears throat> which elements that this particular element will combine with and form compounds. So it's the electrons in the outer electron shell that are the most important in determining chemical properties of that element. Um, and we will not do a whole lot of electron configurations, which is what, that, what it's called when you de determine the total number of electrons in the element and then you determine um, where each electron resides in which electron shell. But you do need to know that um, the first shell that's closest to the nucleus can only hold two electrons. When it has two electrons in it, it is filled. Every shell after that, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, can hold eight electrons. So eight is um, the stable uh, number of valence electrons. And what atoms are always trying to do is they're trying to get themselves in situations to where they can fill that outer electron, that outer um, shell. So for example, this is carbon. Um, in, in figure A, this is carbon. We can see that carbon has two electrons in its first shell, and that first shell is filled. And then it has one, two, three, four in its second electron shell. And so we know that's true because carbon has a total of six electrons. So that means the outer shell is not filled. And carbon is going to arrange itself with other elements in such a way that it fills that outer shell. And we'll talk about how in, in a minute. Neon is a, a, um, one of the noble gases. And um, it's in group eight on the periodic table. It is a stable element already, so it does not form compounds with other elements because it already has eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in its outer energy level or outer electron shell. So we, call, we say that it is already stable, so it doesn't need to do anything in order to become stable. All right, the checkpoint, define atom. That's the smallest um, unit of an element. How is it possible for two samples of hydrogen to contain the same number of atoms but have different weights? We call those isotopes. And instead of, um, <laughs> torturing you with my trying to draw, I'm just gonna answer number two here. It's possible for two samples of hydrogen to contain the same number of atoms that have different weights because the samples may contain different, and here's the key word, isotopes of hydrogen. Because you can have hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, or hydrogen 3 um, are the different isotopes of hydrogen, and that means their masses are different. And so um, the, mass, the mass is being different. It's going to mean the weights are different. All right, so now we're going to move on and talk about chemical bonding. And uh, re the reason that chemicals form bonds is so that they, the atoms can um, fill their outer electron shells or their outer energy levels. So what they can do in order to fill those outer energy levels is they can either share electrons with other atoms, they can gain electrons from other atoms, or they can lose electrons sometimes. Um, we'll look at a situation where losing electrons actually causes the outer shell to, to be filled.
So um, chemical bonds are strong connections that hold atoms together and um, chemical bonding forms molecules and compounds. Molecules and compounds um, are sometimes the same thing, but if you'll look at the definition, there is a slight difference. So a molecule contains more than one atom chemically bonded. That means a molecule can actually contain two atoms of the same element. O2 stands for two atoms of oxygen chemically bonded together. Um, and then the water is two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So in this case, you've got three total atoms and um, one of them is different from the other two. But a molecule can be two atoms or more than two atoms that are the same element and a compound cannot. So water is a molecule, but water is also a compound. So the compound means the atoms have to be from two or more different elements, whereas in a molecule that they can be two or more from the same element, okay? So you've got um, an example of a molecule that can't be a compound, and that's O2, and then a molecule that also is a compound, which is water, H2O, and then you're going to need to know this. This is a chemical formula that's on that you have to um, put on your study guide if you intend to do your study guide, and I hope you do. Um, the chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. That means there are six atoms of carbon, 12 atoms of hydrogen, and six atoms of oxygen that form glucose. Um, now, uh, ions can form in atoms that are unstable, um, the ion forms in order to fill the outer electron shell, okay? So ions are atoms that have an electric charge and they can also be molecules with an electric charge. And I've got a list of the ions that you do need to know the name and the charge um, on your study guide, okay? So the reason they have a charge is that they either have more electrons than protons or they have less electrons than protons. And protons are positive and electrons are negative. So if those numbers are not equal, you're gonna have an, an excess of positive charge or an excess of negative charge. So if an ion is a cation, that means it has a positive charge because it has lost electrons. So it actually has more protons than it does electrons, and that means it has an excess of positive charge. An example of a cation is sodium. The symbol for sodium, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna fix that. The symbol for sodium is Na, and it has a positive charge because it has an extra proton than electron. It has one more proton than it does electron. And anions are, negatively charged because they have extra electrons. They have gained electrons. So an example of an anion would be chloride, which is uh, the element chlorine with an extra electron. Ugh, it should be a negative. Okay, so Cl with a negative charge. We are going to have pictures of that in a minute, so <clears throat> I won't go back and fix that. So what happens when ions form is that Opposite charges are attracted to one another. So if a sodium ion, which we just learned has a positive charge because it lost an electron, is close to a chloride ion, which has a negative charge because it gained an electron, then they're gonna be attracted to each other and they're gonna form an ionic bond and they're gonna form an ionic compound called sodium chloride or salt, table salt. And this is a picture of what that's gonna look like. If you look at sodium, um, the total number of electrons in sodium is 11. The 11th electron is going to reside in the third electron shell. So if sodium were to lose it, then its outer electron shell now becomes the second shell, and it's already filled with eight electrons. You can see that in the picture in the picture in the middle, picture number two. So when sodium loses that electron, it actually has an extra proton, so an extra positive charge, and that makes it sodium ion, which you can see here, the symbol, Na plus, because it has lost an electron and it has an extra positive charge, okay? 
So when it does lose that electron, it actually becomes more stable because now its outer energy level is the second energy level and it's filled with eight electrons. So sodium is stable when it becomes sodium ion. The chlorine atom needs one electron in order to have eight in its outer electron shell. So it gets that one from sodium. And now we have chloride ion with an extra electron, so it's going to have a negative charge. And it's stable because now it has eight electrons in its outer shell. And the bond forms because the sodium is positive, the chlorine is, or the chloride ion is negative, and positive and negative charges are attracted to each other. So that forms the same. That forms the sodium chloride compound. Now covalent bonds, what we just saw before was ionic bonding. Covalent bonds form when atoms share electrons. So we're going to look just at um, oxygen. I'm just going to look at this picture of oxygen here in the middle. Um, the yellow electrons are for the oxygen atom on the left, and the orange electrons are for the oxygen atom on the right. So if you look uh, carefully, there are originally in the oxygen atom on the left, there are one, two, three, three, <laughs> four, five, six electrons in its outer shell. So how many more electrons does oxygen need in order to have it to be stable? It needs two more because it has six already, so it needs two more. Well, if it shares two, with the oxygen on the right, they're both now going to have eight. So what, what they do is they each share two with each other. So now the oxygen on the left has six plus one, two. The, the two orange electrons are now going to be shared between each of the oxygen atoms. So now each oxygen atom has eight total. If you count that outer electron shell, they each have eight. And, um, because they're sharing two pairs, they form a double bond. As you can see, ugh. sorry. They form a double bond, as you can see, um, as you can see here. Why don't I just, I'll just circle it. Okay, so the two lines represents a double bond because two pairs of electrons are being shared. Um, there are two other examples of covalent bonds. Uh, hydrogen and carbon dioxide are also molecules that are formed by covalent bonding. Um, covalent bonds can be polar or they can be nonpolar. When the electrons are shared between the atoms equally, that's a nonpolar covalent bond. But sometimes the electrons are shared, but it's an unequal sharing. In other words, one of the atoms has a stronger pull or a stronger hold on the, those electrons than the other one. A water molecule has um, polar, a polar covalent bond. So <clears throat> water is an example of a polar covalent molecule. And that is because I'm going to have to draw this. Here's your oxygen, one of your hydrogens, because water is H2O. So each hydrogen shares one electron with the oxygen. but the oxygen has a slightly, it has a stronger pull on those shared electrons than the hydrogen does. So it gives the oxygen end of the water molecule a slightly negative charge and the hydrogen end of the water molecule a slightly positive charge. And you can see that here. You can see um, here's a water molecule where you can see the oxygen end is labeled as slightly negative and then the hydrogen ends are slightly positive because again, the oxygen has a stronger pull or a stronger hold on the shared electrons than the hydrogen does. In other words, the electrons are shared unequally between the hydrogen and the oxygen. And what we also see on this page is an example of hydrogen bonding. And the hydrogen bonding is represented by the dashed lines in between the water molecules. And we'll talk about that in the next lecture.